Hello everyone, my name is Charlie, and this is Going Medieval. It's an early beta build of Going Medieval. Special thank you to Irregular Corp for sending me out a copy of this Foxy Voxy game. And it is. It's a voxel 3D building game that very has a lot a lot of similarities to RimWorld. So if you are a fan of RimWorld, you might be a fan of at least the systems that are within RimWorld and how things set up in the UI and stuff. You might be interested in this. There's a lot of differences with this too, but I am going to be comparing a little bit because of how you interact with the game. You'll see what I mean as we go. Let's start a new game. Uh, there's three different scenarios. The standard one is what we're going to be uh, showing you today. Uh, but there's also peaceful, so you won't get attacked at all. And then there's survival. You'll get attacked a lot more often. Difficulty increases over time, right? So it's up to you. There's also a separate difficulty setting down here as well that goes along with uh, the different scenarios. We have a new life as well as lone wolf. I think you can probably explain self-explanatory on those two things. Um, you can read this as well. Each settler has a story about the past they left far behind. But now this tattered group has a common goal to build a new home together. And that's what we're going to show you today, too. But you can also add your new your own starting conditions to it as well. Name it, description, starting narrative. If you're a storyteller, right, you get, get yourself in there. Starting season, number of settlers. And then you can add a variety of different conditions, resources, equipment, etc. All right. So we're just going to do this regular old new life today. And then we have the scenario screen for the map. And you can choose your different settler and uh, settlement name. Uh, I'm just going to go with, let's say, the Hat Hut for now. All right. The Hat Hut. Good. Uh, you can change what your logo and stuff looks like. Um, I don't think they have anything with a hat, but this is this is a hat, kind of. It's a crown. It works. I'm just going to leave everything the way it is. There's three different map types. You can go through a valley. It's uh, more flat, less mountainous stuff. You don't have as much gold, silver, iron, salt, etc. But you have a lot more fertile soil. Uh, you can go hillside, which is like a mixture of the two. And then you can go into mountains, which has a lot more of the stuff that you can mine. Uh, more valuable stuff, later game stuff, etc. But you're also going to have a lot less fertile soil. So it it's, takes up. We're going to go for the hillside for now. Um, you can go with the default size map. That's the only thing available in my game, but I'm assuming that maps can get larger. The maps that come with the game right now are not that large, um, at least as far as the scale of the little squares that you're on. They're large enough to, to make your settlement, absolutely. You're not going to run out of space, at least in the early game. Um, but I feel like as the game progresses, you're going to want maybe a little bigger map. I don't know. Maybe not. I might be wrong. I've only got uh, like an hour in this game just testing it out right now, so we'll see. And then the really cool thing I like about this is as you change the map seed, you can see a preview of what the world looks like. And that's really cool. So uh, like if I wanted to say, for example, go with hills. Uh, ooh. Mm, how about this one? If I go to the hillside one, it's kind of close to the mountain one, but it's, it's not too far away from the mountain. So if we're, if we're going to be progressing... Like, to go get more resources outside of our environment, it doesn't take that long to get there, I wouldn't think. So maybe we'll be all right there. So if that's a thing, then I think I like this. So let's go with this as our map seed. And if you want to play the exact same conditions, I suppose you can, right down here. Um, also, speaking of playing the exact same conditions, two ways you could check this game out if you'd like to. Link in the description brings you to the game store. The game's available for purchase right there. Uh, you can also tune in to the live stream that's going to go live on YouTube. Uh, I'll put the link in the pinned comment down below. I'm going to have a live stream going live an hour after this video posts, and we're going to run it for like three or four like three hours or so right um just to kind of flesh it out play a little bit more past this video uh, as well as get a uh, back and forth with you guys to answer any questions you might have so there's that too so just like rim world right there's a lot of similarities we'll look at those two you'll see them um we have our starting colonists and we can start with three different ones here we can change their name if we'd like to but they all have their strengths and weaknesses and it gives you sort of their your broad this is what your group is good at sort of thing over here right now we're actually pretty good at medicine because of summer hills here uh, but if we can change and randomize 
That'd be pretty cool. Uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, the one thing we don't have is, is anything like uh, prepare carefully, like the the modern room world where you can really fine tune their stats. It's mostly just a randomize and you get what you get. Every colonist has different religious alignments as well as their age, weight, and height differences. And they also have unique perks to them. So this is one's wise, but he's also hefty. Uh, so there's sometimes they're positive, sometimes they're negative. That's the way real people are, isn't it? So I want to make sure we're pretty strong with construction because in this video, I'm going to be building things. I really do. So uh, I think I'm going to do this until I get someone who's, I think, two people. I need two people that are really good at construction. Dagobirth, you are the chosen one. He loves nothing more than biting uh, than the biting air and crisp, crisp frost of midwinter. He thrives in the cold. Okay, Snow White perk. He's also an early bird uh, and he's dainty. Needs the finer things in life to thrive. He struggles to cope with the little things like dirt, cold, and hardship. But he's really good at construction. Come on. He's also good at intellectual, so he can be uh, researching right away. We have a couple of really good intellectuals here, actually. So that'll work out well. Let's get um, Mar Mar Maroon here. Yeah. You have a Cyric, Marion, and uh, Dagobirth. This is going to be our, our starting uh, three. Uh, so let's go ahead and hit next. And again, here's our summary of all the conditions we're going to have. I'm going to leave the tutorial tips on, but I'm probably going to skip most of them and just walk you through how the game works. So let's go and embark. Like I said, um, if you want to check more about the game or you want to learn more about this game, see the links in the description. Um, the game store links, if you, do, if you do decide to purchase it there, you are also at the same time supporting this channel, which I greatly appreciate. You don't have to buy it there. If it's cheaper somewhere else, by all means, go for it. Um, but that is the way you can get the game and support at the same time. And then also the live stream. If you want to come by, ask any questions you have. If I have the answer for you, I'll be glad to answer it there uh, on the spot. So it says a new life. The plague had re ravaged the British Isles, leaving a trail of destruction in its wake. Untold millions went to an early grave, and those left standing were plunged into poverty, brutally scarred by the horrors that they had witnessed. Nothing would ever be the same again. In the springtime of 1353, Marion, Dagobirth, and Cyric set off in the wilderness, uh, into the wilderness to claim a piece of the land as their own, as was their right in the eyes of God and under the law. Here they may lay down the foundations of some kind of future, Perhaps hope will follow. Good land is there for the taking. In all four corners of this once mighty land, citizens are rebuilding in the hopes that the horrors of the past few years can be left behind. It's possible that there will be fighting, drought, sickness, hunger, but what of it? Life goes on, says Dagobirth, and so must we. In the landscape, uh, sorry, into the landscape of rolling hills and ancient, crumbling forts and companions trekked, each ascent uh, rewarded Cyric with a view that stretched for many leagues. No enemy approach would go unseen, he thought. They built a camp that would, in time, become the settlement of Hat Hut. Oh, the Hat Hut. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pause it really quick. Now, again, I, I said I'm going to leave the tutorials on. This is just mostly giving a control overview, so I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that. And um, let's go ahead and just take a look at the maps that we're going to be building with today. Now, this is a voxel sort of system. You can kind of see what that means. There's lots of little square edges, right? Um, and it's also very vertical. This differentiates, differentiates it from Wormworld in a really important way. It actually reminds me a lot of Embark. If you've ever seen that game before, um, there's some similarities in all of these things, right? Everyone's trying to emulate Rimworld in a little bit of ways and to get that really perfect mix and to bring it into a 3d environment i i applaud everyone's efforts let's see how well these guys have done so what i'd like to do is i'd like to figure out where we're going to start our opening settlement we've got some limestone right here as we hover over top of various tiles you'll see the details about that area over here on the left so i can tell this is limestone by hovering over it and this is limestone here as we get over here we're now in rocky soil probably can't farm anything there we have regular soil which is probably great for farming and then there's grass uh we have rocky soil there some limestone to mine okay so i mean we have access to quite a few resources and uh what i'm going to do first is i'm going to have people queue up and let's have them cut down all of these trees just so we can get some extra wood to build our opening little settlement here uh, let's go ahead and maybe cut down those and some these as well and maybe that one uh, okay so I'm gonna let them go and while they're getting on doing that I'm also gonna have them harvest a few berries if they're nearby there's a little bit here and looks like there is not a lot for food hmm 
Where is the food? <laughs> Uh-oh. We're going to need to get started on hunting and stuff pretty quickly here. We don't have a... Oh, there they are. Okay. Whew. I was like, man, we don't have any berries nearby. You got to be kidding me, man. Uh, I'm also going to harvest the grass and stuff too because the grass is going to be used for roofs and stuff. Um, you can use grass and, and stuff for a variety of different purposes. Uh, and then we also are going to allow them to access the whole stockpile because by default, they're not allowed to access any of this stuff. So if you basically allow it, then they'll dip into the supply. All right, so let's take a look at our colonists while they're busy uh, working here. We have a jobs tab here, and the jobs tab works just like RimWorld does, priority system from left to right, uh, and the lower the number, the higher the priority. So if there's priority number one, for example, they'll do that right away. Um, and you can kind of mix and match depending on people's skills. By default, everyone starts at three, but if you have people who are good at certain things, you may want them to prioritize their strengths and not do their weaknesses uh, because someone else can do that job faster and more reliably. People can waste resources in here if they fail to construct, etc. Um, then we have the schedule tab. We can uh, determine whether they work, sleep, do anything you want uh, or anything that needs to be done or leisure time. Dedicated leisure time could be a pretty good thing to keeping people uh, happy and healthy and all that stuff. We have the management tab, good for determining what people do in certain conditions, what kind of food they can have, are they allowed to have any stimulants, uh, what kind of apparel do they wear, weapons should they wield themselves with, etc. You can also manage draft status, because yeah, you can be raided in this game, just like RimWorld, and you uh, can, you know, you can draft your people and send them out into battle and stuff, so uh, hopefully, we, I probably won't see that in this video, because we're not doing it for long enough of a period of time, but it is what it is. Now, there's a research tab here, but we can't do anything with that yet until we get our initial starting location done. So let's talk about building really quickly. Let's give them a simple place. I'm going to give them a really simple place, I think, right? Hmm. I kind of wanted to do it right here on this rocky area. But now I'm thinking we can't build anything on the very edge. Um, just like... Never mind. I'm gonna start. I'm trying to stop saying just like RimWorld, but there's so many similarities between this thing that it's like it's really hard to not compare it, right? It's it's one of those deals where I'm gonna compare it just because it's so similar uh, in how certain things work, right? So uh, yeah, you can't build anything on the very edge to prevent you from completely blocking off your settlement um, and having it to where nobody can spawn in on the map. So I'm gonna maybe make a little hut. Let's go right here. I say little, but is it really going to be little? I really don't build little things very often. Uh, yeah, let's go. Uh, I don't want it to be completely square, so let's make it a little interesting. Mm, that's not what I'm looking for, though. Let's cancel this really quick. And we're going to go back to building the wall. And we're going to go, let's say, out a little bit more than over. And mm, yeah, let's cut in right here. Yeah, let's cut in right here, actually. And then we're going to go in like that. Okay, good. And then we'll just cancel this part. So this will be our first initial little little hut. Now, of course, we have to build a, a door or they're never going to be able to get in. So I'm going to put a door, I think, right there. Now they can get in through uh, that entrance. And I might put a back door in, too, just so it's a little easier to get in. So if the door is there, we might put the back door, let's say, uh, let's just line it up. Say the doors are in from the front and back like that. Okay, so they're going to get on building that and constructing with all the wood that they've cut down from the trees. If they need more, they'll go ahead and do it. But generally speaking, your, set your settlers will do things that you tell them to do specifically before they do resource gathering. So if I tell them to build something, they'll stop what they're doing and go ahead and build that thing. And everyone kind of participates equally unless you tell a certain person not to build. So, for example, if I go to jobs and I take a look and I can see, well... Everybody has got decent construction skills, so I want everyone to build. That's fine. So I, that doesn't actually serve my example. I was kind of hoping somebody was bad at construction. But if they were bad at construction for any reason, then yeah. Now, they also have little stars. You might see the little stars next to them, and that's like their affinity, their interest, right? They have a, a deep passion for things, right? Just like. And um, that means they're going to also get better at that stuff faster. Okay. Um, now, what I want to do first pretty quickly here. I want to give them shelter, right? Um, but I'm also, I was going to build a roof, but now I'm really against it because I would like to build maybe a, a two-story house. I'd like to have an upper floor. Um, so if I build the roof, I'm going to have to tear it down later anyway. I guess it is what it is. We're going to take the thatched roof here. 
And I'm going to make thatched roof. Uh, it looks like it won't let me build it there unless I build the wall. Okay, this is not a not a bad deal. Not a bad deal. If we're going to do a two-story house, let's do the two-story house. Um, and I'm going to go, I think, right about... Oh, this could be interesting. Hey, I got an idea. Uh, I got an idea. Love having ideas. <laughs> Love having ideas. Um, I'm going to do... Ooh. I already have this indentation. Why not just why not just do it here? We could. We really could. Initially, before I build the roof, because I don't want to have to redo a whole lot, I'm going to build the research bench. And uh, we're going to put the research bench like right there. And let's have one of our people who are great at construction prioritize that. We're going to click somebody, right click this, and just say prioritize. And now they'll go and do that immediately. So we're going to have our research bench up. He has an 18 construction skill, and he still failed. Oh, you got to love it. Research bench goes up. There we go. So that unlocks the research panel. Before I accept that, I'm going to go back into jobs, find someone who's really good at research, and I'm going to do a two here. Now, if you're not familiar with how this works, maybe you never played RimWorld uh, or any game that does a job system like this, basically how this works is the lower the number, the higher the priority. So number one priority, your number two priority, etc. They'll work from left to right on that read list. So they'll look for anything that's a one on this side. They'll work their way this way. If there's no ones, they'll come back over here. Is there any twos? Okay, yeah, there's a two, and I'll do that. And if there is no two, then they'll work over here, go to a three, etc. Now, if I also mark two tasks of equal weight, so let's say this is a two and this is a two, they'll do all construction availability first, so they won't do any research if there's construction available to do. Once the construction is complete, then they'll move on to their second um, the second thing that's the highest priority, right? And they keep doing it that way. And you can govern how they, what jobs they do. So for example, if I take Dagobirth here and I say, hey, I want you to do research above construction. Cool. He'll do that now instead of construct. Except there is no research project designated right now. So let's actually do that. I'm going to take a look. Um, this works a little bit differently than RimWorld. So I actually want to do this a little bit. The research tree is here. And it's not that extensive. It's pretty simple. Again, this is a beta build, early game. Maybe it gets expanded later. I don't know. But there's not that extensive of a tree here. Um, and how this works is you're going to spend Chronicle. So you're going to build this up. Right now we have 25 available. And we need to get architecture first. That's where the wooden beams are. I'm going to get that right here. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock that. That spends 15 Chronicle to unlock. So now we have 10 left. I want to get to agriculture so we can have a good sustainable food supply. And that means I need to get to all these crops and I need to have 15 Chronicle to do that. It's an instant unlock. It doesn't take any time to unlock something when you select it, but you're going to spend this currency to do it. You build up that currency just like any other building in this game or any other bench or production workflow in this game. You're going to select the bench. And then you're going to select the product that you want to come from that bench. So in this case, I say I want you to do this. Now, you're going to see, as soon as I click that, right away, Daggerbirth went to work because that's his uh, that's his highest priority. He's immediately going to go and research. But I can also choose to, instead of making just one, I can tell you to do it forever. Or I can say, hey, please do this until you have a certain amount. So in this case, uh, I can hold control and do it by 10. I'm going to go up to, let's say, 40. So this is going to make Daggerbirth prioritize researching before anything else until he has 40 Chronicle build up. Then he's going to go off and do something else. And that's how that gets produced. Uh, the second thing I want to do here, actually, um, I need to cut this down. That's not supposed to be in here. I want to give them wooden floors. So we're going to give them wooden floors throughout this, uh, throughout this house, right through here. And we're going to go in like that. So wooden floors for everyone. Okay. And unlike RimWorld, I don't have to manage the floor for the doors, thankfully, because I never remember. Uh, but it actually would be a good idea to give these guys some windows, I think, too. So let's give them, uh, where's the window? Right here. A wooden window. I'm going to give you a window there, and we'll give you a window right there, and then we'll give you one back here, and then one over like that. So just some various windows is probably a good idea. So everyone's going to be constructing. I didn't quite get their sleeping arrangements done, but for the first day, it doesn't really matter all that much. Just let them sleep outside. It's fine, all right? <laughs> Maybe to sleep at their workbench. A true researcher never sleeps. When they do, they sleep 
with their head rest upon their keyboard, or in this case, their parchment. <laughs> in any case, uh, day-night cycle, of course, also exists. There's also a weather system in this, and we want to get this stuff in a stockpile pretty quickly because weather will absolutely damage it and cause it to go bad. So... We need to keep that in. Now, I figure for the first day and night, we're probably not going to get any rain. Um, so I'm going to take and do a stockpile zone. I'm going to click the zone tool down here. And this default stockpile is right here. And I can go ahead and let's have it. Let's just let's just line it up around this. Yeah, let's just line it up over here. Let's say that this is the stockpile. I want you guys to put it here. Now, that's not sheltered or anything yet. Um, so I guess I'll do the idea. Uh, we're going to take the wall, go there, and then also take another wall and put it there i guess all right and uh you'll see what we're gonna do here in a second i think at least i hope we, you will but basically i'm gonna put a balcony over top of this and um all this stuff will be covered by the balcony and then we'll have the thatched roof going over the whole thing at least that's what i'm hoping to do now that balcony idea i was talking about earlier uh that's only gonna be possible at the top floor putting floor down right where there's you know nothing else going on that's only possible with wooden beams so we need a wooden beam and we can have these beams kind of extend like that. Um, I don't know if you need it all the way across like this, though. Do you, do you need it to be... Hmm. I've never done this before, so this is an experiment. I'm just assuming this is how it works. Um, so this beam can go... It's too long. Okay. But you can do it. We can go across this way. I'm wondering about the doorways, though. Let me see how this works. If I want a wooden floor to be top the beam Is that possible to do it's a little wonky isn't it this is this is this is why it's difficult to do you know 3d building games like this because the interface can get a little bit weird it looks to me like i'm gonna need okay the beams hold up floors got it because we don't we're not gonna actually need to have yeah, we're not going to need to have the beam over the door. Good. All right, so let's... Um, I want their, their beds and stuff to be on the top floor. So I'm going to put stairs uh, right about, let's say, there is a good spot for stairs. Wait, where's the window going? All right, the window's there. We'll put the stairs here. Yep, and then we're going to go up to a second floor, which is going to require me to have walls all up in here. All right. We're going to get walls built around this area, too. There we go. And then I think I'm actually going to bring this out as like a little, you know, like a little patio kind of area here, right? And um, we'll put the uh, we'll put the wooden beams across this as well. So we can have a floor and a patio area up top of this. Aha, oh, that's good. Uh, beam there, beam there. And then I think we'll put one across that way too. And hopefully that means I can put the floor all the way in here because it, it takes the neighboring tile too so maybe not we'll see if i want this floor to be here can i do that it looks like i can it looks like i can oh that's good all right i've i've never done this before so this is i wanted to experiment live with you guys let's put this door right there and this will let people be able to get out into this balcony but i think it'll also shelter this area the stockpile area i think i don't know but this is coming together, man. I like this. They don't have a sleeping area yet, which is a little bit troublesome. I guess I can always move it later, right? Let's go to the furniture tab, and we're just going to give them a sleeping spot there, there, and there. It's at least something, right? Give them something. All right. So let's take a look at the research real quick. He's been working, all right? Dagobert's been at it, and now he's got, 50, he got 17 total, so which means we can unlock things like new furniture if we'd like to. This will give us actual beds. To the sleeping spots. Ooh, maybe we do that instead of those sleeping spots. Stone chair and wooden chairs. I think I want to get started first on agriculture, though, because it's a sustainable food source that's not berries and scavenging like that. So um, let's go ahead and unlock uh, agriculture instead. All right. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do, while they're building this, I want to lay out where our farms are going to be. Now, this is rocky soil, so we're not really going to be able to farm this very well. Uh, this is coal. Okay. Coal, clay. Interesting. Okay, we got salt right there. Nice. Some clay there. Um, and then we have soil, which I assume is much better for farming. At least I assume. So why don't we try 
farming down here first. We're gonna grow some, we have, we can grow uh, cabbage, flax, carrots, beets, barley, herbs. We can also grow uh, red currant. We have tall grass and birch trees, and they have all their various, you know, utility for them. Um, I think we start with beets. And uh, we can put like a little beet field to the farm, like right here, let's say. And then we'll get some carrots too. Uh, now each one of these crops have different growing conditions. Uh, beets take 21 days to grow. We get a maximum yield uh, available in nine days, looks like. I'm not sure what that means. I think maybe it, you know, I don't know what that means. I guess we'll find out. Um, number of harvests is just one. And then the base yield at peak is 10 beets. Uh, we can also take and do uh, carrots if we want to as well. And I think I will. I'm just going to put the carrots like right here, let's say. Uh, wait, are you? Yeah, you're going to go right here like this. Carrot field. Yeah, right here like this. Right on the edge. And we'll just use... I actually kind of want to see the difference. So there's soil except those two tiles. These are all grass. But let's see what that does. And then eventually we'll get walking pads and stuff and we'll be able to to migrate and move around there. We can also have them move down here easier uh, with these ramps. So there's already a ramp built here and they can just kind of walk down. But if the ramp wasn't there, I could always make stairs, I think. Um, they might deteriorate because it's wooden stairs. Might deteriorate in the, in the weather, but I don't know. All right, so check this out, man. Uh, this is going happening, right? We got wooden. We got the wooden floor already built there. Huh? Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, I want to probably get more of these wooden beams, though. So let's get another one there, and probably one more, at least here, and maybe there, is needed too. I'm not entirely sure. It can't go here because of the stairs. Um, but I'm not entirely sure exactly how far away from the beams can we build. It looks like we can build kind of as far as we want. As long as you have beams. So I guess we'll just build the floor. Yeah, so we'll take the floor to... Uh, let's go there. Eh, like there. There we go. And then we'll drag it over to at least here. Yep. Ah, see, now it won't go... doesn't look like it'll go... Uh, wherever we want. There is a gap here where I think that's because of the beams. You know? So I might need another beam right here. A lack of the beams. All right, so if I put this, uh, let's go. Now we can also move the camera a little bit vertically too. So at the top here, you're gonna see 16 out of 16. If I use Z and X, I can start moving down floors. And so as I move lower and lower, right, we start to get even deeper into the ground, right? That kind of thing. And you can reveal things if it, if it helps you. Uh, so for this example, I probably would want to uh, go down to here because then I can add this easier. And I can move back up if I want to. All the way to 16 just reveals the top of the mountains and everything later on. Uh, and the higher you, uh, the higher your map seed, right? The higher you are up on that map seed, the better, I guess. Uh, you know, I'm kind of thinking we probably want. We don't need another floor, but I kind of want like a railing of some kind on this balcony. Oh, and they never, they never built their, ah, guys, they never built their thing. Let's go. Uh, yeah, let's work our way down to the first floor here for a second. And um, I'm going to get one of my dudes here. Is Marion, is he good at construction? Yeah, Marion is okay at construction. Can you prioritize this? You need to clear the area first. Really? It's not clear? You need to clear the area first. Okay. Um, well, maybe they'll do it. Maybe they won't. Here they go. Oh, I think they're... Yeah, okay. Maybe that's how? Fire selecting a settler. Marion, build this. Hmm. I guess it's not cleared. Maybe there's something else going on that's, like, preventing that from happening. But this is, like, it's looking like a nice little cabin so far. But now it's raining, and that's bad. Very, very bad. Oh, no. Now, each of these guys can also wield uh, equipment, too. So let's take a look at that really quick while we're still here. Uh, manage. So I want to take a look at what they're good at. In this case, he's got nine on marksman. Dagobirth is a one marksman. Okay. Five melee. So he's not a very good fighter. Uh, and then there's Siric, which is a three marksman and a ten melee. Okay. So let's have Siric 
because he's like the best melee fighter. Uh, nope, Marion is the best melee fighter we have. Best melee fighter, I think we're going to have you be our tank. Now, some of the menu options are kind of bugging out for me, and they don't always appear, but I kind of figure out where they are, but they're not always appearing. So here's the sturdy sword. We're going to have you grab that. We had we gave her the sword and the shield, and I'm also going to give her the fine linen gambeson. And that's going to basically change the way she looks. But also, she's like my tank now. So if we get attacked, I want her at the front lines. And then other people can help and support her. So we've got... Um, Marksman is bad. Okay, never mind. You're not going to do much supporting of anything. Uh, Cyric is not a great marksman either, unfortunately. But they can get practice. Yeah, we'll give them a good short bow. Dagobirth will... Uh, I don't know what we're going to give you. I guess you're a melee fighter better than anything else. So we'll give you the spear over here. We're going to at least have them grab some sort of weapons. That's also to get it out of the rain. Now, normally they'd have uh, shelter from this weather, but um, I've opted not to build the... Uh, <laughs> I've opted not to build the, the roof yet. And uh, I want to also build the wooden floor. Ooh, not there. Yeah, I want to build the wooden floor starting here and going to here. And then the wooden wall is going to wrap around like this. And it's going to be probably there, and then there'll be a door right there. All right, so I've got at least queued that up. Uh, and then the last thing to do is to build the roof, right? And I think the roof might... I don't know if the roof can be built on one of those beams or not. I'm, I kind of hope it could, but I don't think it can. I don't see why it can't. That's the thing. I don't see why it couldn't, but I'd rather this not have a post. So, Dagobirth, I think we're going to adjust your job to get you on construction before anything else now. You've done some pretty good research, sir, and I appreciate that. But we're not going to get to we're not going to get to these things all that quickly, and we have to focus on some things before we do that. So, these guys are walking over here and um, they're preparing the fields, right? So that we can grow food. This is very good for us. We also have really low foods in our stockpile. Now, you might also be wondering, where is the details on what you have in stock, right? Because that's not apparently obvious. Well, it's over here, but you only get to see it when you have things in the stockpile. So in this case, sticks, we have that because it's sitting in the stockpile, but they haven't managed to get this over there yet. And I'm not 100% sure whether or not this floor protects this from the weather. I hope that it does. It does say that it's under roof. Okay, good. It's an under roof tile. So this will at least protect it um, from the weather, but outside, not so much. All right. Uh, shall I let this run on just a little bit longer? We're going to cut down a few more trees. How about over here? <clears throat> and, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, let's go ahead and just have them... Basically, I want, to, I want them to build this base. I want them to get done with this. I'm going to have them cut down a whole bunch of these trees. And then jobs, let's have them... Is harvesting or is it going to be cutting plants and chopping trees? I'm going to put everybody on a two there. And we should see people transition away from the fields. Uh, there's, a, there's a little bit of food growing here. We should see them transition away from the fields now and onto cutting trees. And they do that right away. And that's going to give us construction materials. Now that we have construction materials, let's get Dagobirth, uh, Cyric, maybe. Dagobirth's the best at it. We're going to get him on construction. And all of a sudden, yeah, he'll leave. He'll stop, uh, he'll stop cutting trees, and he'll start using the lumber that they're cutting to build up the rest of our base. So I'm going to let them run on this, get this house done for a second, and, um, and I'll be right back. All right, welcome back. So we're having them cut down this tree here because it's... Putting shade over top of my crops. Can't have that. So we're getting rid of that stuff too. And uh, we'll, we'll have them keep farming and stuff. That's going to happen. For jobs, I think I'm going to have uh, the growing and stuff happen with, let's see, 9, 2, and 9. Let's have it happen with Marion. So we're going to have her focus on growing and making sure this is all good and also the harvesting tasks. Now we also have a lot of the stuff hauled and brought underneath here. For the stockpile uh just had to let them i actually had to prioritize somebody on it so to make sure that it got done so i put marion on that for a while and she'll do these things until there's none of these to do and then she'll haul so a dedicated hauler is always nice when you have three people it's 
kind of hard to justify that, but as your colony grows, having some dedicated haulers is a pretty cool thing. So I'm going to have Dagobirth head back to, uh, I think, researching after the construction stuff is done, which is almost done. So let's take a look really quick. If I go lower, we have our, our standard little place in here. Looking pretty good. Um, I need to have a place to prepare food. So let's take a little quick look at butchering table and see if we can't have that. I would really like that to actually be outside. I don't know if there's a production. Um, I mean, something happens with production on that. But I would really like this to not like be in our way. Like This seems like a pretty cool spot for that to be. Just right underneath this little um, area here, right? So I'm going to put that there. And then the campfire for cooking... Right, we can flip this around and maybe have that be, you know, kind of over here in this area. As we unlock more furniture, I'm thinking, like, get a nice little gathering area right here. Possibly. Now, we have some ale in here, and they've uh, it's taken some hit point damage, right? You can see 49 out of 50 because it's in the rain. They haven't hauled it anywhere yet. Uh, we also have some five mechanical components. We're going to need that kind of stuff. And uh, here we have a simple healing kit pile which is already 75 out of 100 hit points. So we really need to get this stuff hauled in. Um, I'm not entirely sure if there is a preferred stockpile system in this, but I'm going to put a little stockpile right over here. And we're going to have them hopefully... Mm, the default stockpile, textures, clothing, etc. Let's have them place... I think really anything that's textile material, food probably not, carcasses no, and apparel. So we'll have the, all that happen. And then is there a way to have this be like a prioritization? This is default stockpile, but I don't see any indication that there's a way to make this like, you know, like critical and then important. It's, you know what I mean? So I, I don't think so. I don't think there's a way to do that, at least not right now. So I'm going to leave it there and hope that they just go ahead and do it. But research-wise, if we can get ourselves up to, um, well, 15 again, we can get extra furniture. And that gives us chairs and we can have an actual table, I think, eventually. We can also get some clay brick making. This gives us little kilns. Ooh, we can make bricks. Oh, that's interesting. Smelting. Yeah, we're going to need all that stuff. Wooden weaponry, make our own weapons. Tailoring to get us ourselves better clothing. So there's lots of different stuff in the research tree. Uh, looks like this also is just a better table. It says choose alchemy, divination, or the experience of your settlers to figure out how stuff works. Cool. Um, I would like to move uh, to get. I would like to get furniture to give them better beds. I think that's where I would really like to go with this. Ooh, is that cabbage? Ooh, cabbage is done. Now it's. Freshness is deteriorating. The pile will decompose in 14 days. It's degrade, degrading because of the ground type and the temperature. Okay, so if we take a look up here, it's uh, all the details of the day, right? Spring, summer, uh, currently it's spring. So moderate temperature, rain, and fog are frequent. Small chance of hailstorms. Wow, okay. It's going to be summer then. We'll have higher temperatures, chance of heat waves. Build underground storage to keep your food fresh during the hot summer days. So, because there's verticality, right? Yeah, underground storage. Oh, we should. Let's do that. Um, we can maybe do it right here. We have the stairs here already, but maybe they maybe they take another door here, which brings them to underground. Oh, let's do it. Um, we're going to go, I think, right here. And we can go across, let's say, there and down and this will sort of be like our entrance to get to the underground right so the wooden door will pop that right like that all right good we'll let them go ahead and go on and build that uh, as best they can their window in this floor is right here so we're not going to interfere with that um and then i need a roof on this building too so let's let's talk about roofing right because we need to give them shelter at least so the thatched roof is going to go from here and i want to go to there but in order to do that, it looks like I'm going to need one of those beams. Yeah, that's what it looks like anyway. So um, I think we're going to go ahead and do that now. So let's get the beam positioned here. I think that will provide us with everything we need. At least I hope it will. I'm not sure how the game handles this irregular roof shaping. 
So I guess we'll find out. Uh, but if I put this like this, it should work. But I want it to be like all the way over here too. So now this works, but that doesn't give me roofing for this side, right? So I'm gonna need roofing here now. And uh, I don't know, again, I don't know how this game treats roofing in irregular shapes because it looks to me like they want all your buildings to be very square. And that's boring. So I'm hoping there's maybe later on there's some support for that. But I don't see that happening right now. I need another beam looks like here. And then if I want to put the roof here, I can do it like that. We'll see how that looks. Maybe it'll look okay. Um, I'm not sure how that whole crossing, the roof crossing like that, but we'll see how that looks. Uh, and then I had this because I was going to put this as a roofed area too. Um, but now I'm thinking maybe that's maybe that's not needed either. If I do the, the, the beams here with the thatched roof, can I make that happen? It, see, because it, it, doesn't, it doesn't look like it, right? Because it's going to interfere with this other roof. So it's not going to let me do that. Um, but... Uh, so let's let's go ahead and cancel that. Uh, deconstruct? No, oh, no, no. I'm clicking this. Yeah, the wooden beam. Cancel that. And cancel this too. There we go. I think I'm going to deconstruct this instead. So this will end up being open again. Um, the underside of this is protected. And we should probably get some meat. So how about we go ahead and tell them to uh, forever butcher. If you have meat, butcher it right away, right? And then um, if we can get some research going, actually, there is preserving food. And that's going to allow us to do a smokehouse and uh, smoked meat as well. A building to hang meat and cure it with smoke from an oven from an open fire. Oh, nice. I was thinking like preserving food would be like a fridge and stuff, right? But no. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so this is coming together. I like this little building. Um, now, the purpose of this one, right, is to provide a way to get down to the underground. So how do we do that? Well, I'm going to mine this out. Uh, kind of need to figure out where the stairs are going to go. I would think the stairs is a three-wide thing, right? One, two, three. Yeah. So that's why I went out a little bit. So if I went to the stairs, maybe, maybe like right here, actually. If I mine this out, yeah, let's mine this out, and then we can come down lower. So really bring us down, bring us down, there we go. And then we can um, mine this dirt even more as we get down there. Uh-huh, yeah. Um, I can't really select this yeah, here. That's what I'm looking for, I think. So something like, I don't want to take, ooh, that's the problem, though. That is an issue I didn't think of. If I do that, I'm literally removing the, the floor. I wanted the, the storage to be underneath here, right? It's like a basement. But I'm, I'm wondering how the floor reacts to having the supports, you know, taken out from underneath it. Uh, I guess we'll find out because <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna cut this away and I can keep mining underneath the floor. And that will provide me with underground uh, storage solutions, right? That's going to be nifty to figure out. And this is the kind of things that we can do with this game. Verticality changes how you build bases, and you can get some pretty cool-looking things. And I would really like to get this uh, this roof done soon, so I'm going to put everybody on construction. So we can hopefully get the roof done before anything else. I want them to really have a great shelter here. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in the sleeping spots up here instead. So their sleeping spots can be... Um, in the top floor area. So we'll have them go, let's say, here, here, and here. Give them a little space, right? There we go. Oh, the thatched roof going in. Yes. I got to see it. Let me see it. Boom. <laughs> hey, that looks really cool. Doesn't that look good? Come on, guys. That looks awesome. We need, we're absent some windows here though, aren't we? I think, uh, I think we'll put like a window right above the door. That could work. And then another one maybe here. And then one here. And then one, uh, uh, actually, I'd like one there. Not here. Can I see the, the wall? 
I have a... Do I have a window prompted to be built here? Well, if there's two windows, then there's two windows. Whatever. But we're just lacking windows, and I, I, need, to, I need to do that. So, window should be going in, I think. Yeah, right there. That's with the door. And then the wooden window should be going, I think, right there, it looks like. So, I can put another one there. All right, sweet. So once the windows get in, then it'll look really nice. And we can get the windows in the back too. So we probably want a window, let's say, uh, we can put one above this door, or this window here, right? There and there, right? And then another window can go, I think, here and here. Wait, I put it here, right? That's one, two away. So we can put it like that. Yeah, right there. Cool. Guys, look. Look at it. It's gonna be wonderful. It's like your it's like your favorite cabin home you've always wanted, right? You would love to live here. I know you would. So that's gonna do it for this video. I'm gonna leave this here. If you want to learn more about the game and check it out even further, let me know in the comments down below. You can check it out with the link down in the description for the game store as well. And uh, you can also join me in the live stream today at 10 a.m. Eastern time. It might even be going on right now. Links are all down below. Thank you so much for joining me today. This has been Going Medieval. I'm I'm excited about the prospects of it. And I, I we can mine down here and get underneath it. We're probably gonna be working on our underground storage on the live stream. So take care. We'll see ya. Bye bye. <laughs>